What's up, world? I go by the name of Jabari. You already know. Stay ready so you don't have to get ready. This is the Words with Friends podcast. And if you don't know, you guys can support the Words with Friends podcast with a dollar tip at patreon.com slash Jabari. All right? So if you're getting value from the podcast, if you enjoy it, if you like it, I love you guys just listening to it. But support your man. Dollar tip. Patreon.com. P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Jabari. And all right, we're about to get into it. Right now, I have my friend Maya Washington, a.k.a. Shameless Maya, a.k.a. Hustle Woman, a.k.a. Renaissance Lady, the Renaissance Shameless lady. Girl. There we go, there we go. Bunch of a.k.a.s. Um, some, of you, some of you may know Maya from uh, my little mini-series, Follow Me, uh, because I had her on there talking about her career and stuff like that but it was only five minutes so now we have a little bit more time to get into the depths of what it is she does what she has going on and all that jazz so first of all how are you doing i'm good it's like the first day in california i'm wearing shorts and yes, i leave because, tomorrow <laughs> yeah when you when you were here it, it was it was cold it was cold yeah not new york cold but it was still cold yeah man speaking of new york um they're just getting hit with so much stuff like you said there was a Apparently explosion. a big explosion in Harlem, not mm. too far from where you live. Yeah. Uh, it happened on the east side, I think between 114th, 116th, and Park Ave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <sighs> where my family lives. My family lives on like 128th. Oh, yeah. Lexington. So, yeah, I my prayers go out to everyone that has been affected by that. Um, and good thing I heard from one of my friends who's living out there, um, they were renovating the building. So a lot of people were already vacant. I don't know. But I didn't see I that know, in the news, though. Yeah, two so people died. Two people died. Right. And uh, I think about 18 got injured, but they're still... What was it from? In. What was this blast? A gas leak. So uh, somebody made a call to Con Edison saying they were smelling gas. And like literally 20 minutes after, um, they did, like they dispatched uh, Con Edison staff. Yeah. But by the time they got there, the explosion already happened. Was this a... Was this like, what type of building was this? Was this a project or was this like a new building? I don't building or think was it this? was a project. I just think it was um, a conversion. Um, okay. Well, I was, because I was going to be the first to be like, I, I don't know any information on it, but I was like, right. man, this is probably like a bad build or a building where like the, the city doesn't care about. Oh. And this is why this happened. And oh, I was no. just, I, I just don't believe in like. I don't think so. I think. I mean, the thing is, tenants were already complaining for a couple of weeks that there was the smell of gas. And this was, but okay, so who's to blame? Is it Con Edison or is it? Well, if people were already complaining, I don't know if anyone actually made a call, but mm. the tenant, the tenants or the super or the landlord of those, somebody should have called. And if mm. Con Edison didn't dispatch someone at that point, because yeah. they don't know, I mean, there's a lot of buildings that around if they don't know that there's a problem how can they fix it so i don't know if anyone called and they didn't respond so i don't know mm, wow. who's to blame but it's just unfortunate yeah it is unfortunate i really uh hope that everybody is okay and yeah thoughts and prayers go out to those people um so you have been in los angeles for what maybe like a month a now? month and a half wow. i got here february 1st wow. and March. uh yeah it's been a while it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> so what, what have you been doing out here i mean i know but like, um for i've been hustling the thing is, okay, I started, I don't know if the, the listeners know that I started a shameless self-promotion thing online for a year and a bit. But in that time, I literally, because I, I was more popular and my, my uh, I guess my popularity grew from YouTube, mm -hmm. with videos come production. And for me, because I come from like a technical background in photography, I want to make sure those videos are to a certain standard. So I spent a lot of time filming and editing. So I'm basically in my home like however many hours a week and I yeah. don't see outside like I don't do that whole thing so I made it a point to spend this month here in Los Angeles just like pure networking and trying to get out of the digital space for at least a month and just mm -hmm. like meet people so I can come back to it with like a fresh pair of eyes okay so I'm, I want to tell like when I first met you years back uh you were yeah i know you were doing photography yeah and you were at the time talking to andrew and i about how to make a doc you were trying to make oh, yeah. a documentary <laughs> film about 
uh, aerobics. aerobics and like 80s aerobics. So aerobics. that's where that's where that's how I met you. And so we talked about that for a bunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I forgot you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and then, you know, then Andrea was telling you, you should just put your stuff out there. You should kind of just like go and right. and share your talents with the world and all that stuff. And so what? And then you started the YouTube thing. Talk a little bit about why you really decided to shamelessly self-promote yourself and put that, just put your life on YouTube, essentially. Well, Andrea, uh, Andrea Lewis, who is an actress and awesome uh, producer, uh, she also the creator of uh, Black, Black Actress, actress. Um, she was... She was living in New York at the time, and I was telling her like all the drama that was happening in my life, and um, she's the one who suggested to go on YouTube. I thought it was the stupidest idea ever. I was just like, "Ew, I don't like YouTube. Like, there's nothing good about it." Because you know, at the time, my perception of it was very like low quality, just a bunch of like slapstick stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but the idea kept like it was resonating over the like, the course of a month, and I finally I was like, "You know what? My life is not where." It, I wanted to be, I was working like three jobs, cocktailing, three different like bars in New York yeah. City. And then I'm also trying to do the photography thing and then doing odd jobs as a voiceover actor here and there. So I decided, I was like, you know what? I have nothing else to lose. Like, why am I acting like I'm this like, cause you know, when you're a professional photographer, um, who's broke, <laughs> mm -hmm. you want to still maintain this image of at least publicly that you're working and making money and doing that. Meanwhile, you know, you're, well, at least for me, like, I'm fake hustling. It till you make it. Till yeah, time. you know what yeah. I mean? So I'm like, I don't want to start a YouTube channel and like kind of disintegrate that idea of my, my photography thing. So it was just, a, it was all this mental thing in my head. And mm -hmm. I was just like, you know what? That's the last thing I haven't done, like promoting myself. Mm -hmm. So I just said, you know, let, let's just try it. The worst thing that can happen is, it sucks and then you just get off but yeah yeah and so w i guess what made you commit to that one year you know because that yeah it's like you're starting something and you're like already saying to yourself i'm gonna do this for one year right. immediately why why was it a year or and did you want to commit to something because like it's, well to me it's like when you commit publicly you now have said it to yourself right. and you've said it to others and so now it's like if you don't do this it just gives you a little more to. pressure yeah you know yeah. what i mean to to, to do right, it right yeah is that what's the question <laughs> sorry yeah exactly it's like it's like is that what you were thinking oh um i just i know for one thing um i was embarrassed i've always been kind of like private about the fact that I do a bunch of different things because growing up, it's always like, you got to choose one. Are you a yeah, photographer? Oh, yeah. Are you an actor? And this is like, that's completely changed now. I feel mm -hmm. now it's like, what you only do one, like you better have more tricks than that. Yeah, yeah. But, um, at the time it was kind of like, it's been a gripe I've had growing up. It's like always having to pick one. So it's like people either knew me as just a photographer or an actor. A few people knew that I did both, mm -hmm. but, um, I just wanted to just, get over my shame and embarrassment of who I was and just getting over these fears because I'm like and when I put that first video out it was like so nerve-wracking mm -hmm. actually I cried I think I mentioned that wow. in earlier videos the first video I posted yeah actually not the first like the first three I cried mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> over what I don't know but yeah. like in my mind I was just like it's really a psychological thing like I was psyching myself out of my mind uh, like bracing myself for all this hate or just mm -hmm. just like and also caring so much what people think and yeah. how people perceive me. Like, at the time, I cared so much. Mm -hmm. Like, what they thought of me. And now I'm just like, whatever. I mean, sure, I cared a, a little bit now. But now I'm just like, whatever. I still have to do what I got to do. Yeah, I think that you have to just, you know, you, you can't... No, nothing creative comes out of doing things because you care what other people think. You right, know what I mean? Yeah. Or if like, you can't be thinking about, well, how are people going to react to this? Or how are people going? You just have to do it. Just Whatever do it, is true yeah. to yourself and speaks to you. And then like, if people gravitate, they gravitate. And another thing I think what anybody that's creative has to realize is that not everything is going to work. You right. know what I mean? Some things just might not work. Some things, I've had plenty of things that don't, that have not worked. Like, mm -hmm. I was going to put out a mixtape when I was in college and I had like two songs done and 
all this stuff. Not right. me rapping, but it was right. like other people on it. And the whole thing tanked and it just never came. It can never came out. Oh, it never came out. No. Because you have your own. Well, it was just like, it, it was just too hard to get all these artists. Like I had a song with okay. Nicki Minaj and Pusha T. Okay. And, and then I had a song with Young Chris from the Young Guns. And then I had uh, some other songs. Like, But it was just it was just too much. And it was just like, it was just too much time and energy to do it. But I told people I was going to do it. And then it oh. didn't come out. And then like. Oh, it was just a failure, you know what I mean? Oh, but right, had, when you tell people things, Yeah, you know what I mean? You, well, for me, I'm major on, like, if I put it out there, mm -hmm. I, I want to fulfill it. I mean, there yeah. are times that I can't. Not that yeah. I can't, I don't, and it mm -hmm. makes me feel awful. It makes you, but at the same time, you know, yeah, it makes you feel bad, but you just get over it. And then, as long as you keep producing and you're doing other stuff, nobody's going to hold you, like, accountable for, I mean, you know, they will, but nobody's going to be like, like... It's just a project, you know what right. I mean? It's just a, it's not, right. it's a, it's, it's more so a lesson than a failure. You right, know I mean? yeah. So that's how I like to think about that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so, okay, so what do you like to consider yourself or do you even consider yourself anything now because you still do photography, but you're doing a lot of vlog style stuff? I don't stuff. really do that much. I don't do photography. You don't do to, for, photography I do, anymore? I do photography on Instagram. <laughs> So, well, okay, so tell tell people what it is that your YouTube channel sort of it consists of and what type of content you put on there. Um, well, it consists of a lot. There's uh, techie stuff, so things that I know um, as a photographer and a, a YouTuber. So I have like a Techie Tuesday that I started. But because I've been out here in L.A. and I, I made it a point to go out, I haven't really been sticking to that. Um, but I have that. I have like personal vlogs. Mm -hmm. Um that are more like documentary style, so it's not just me talking directly to a camera, it's me bringing the camera with me on my adventures. Um, then I have like fashion and beauty, but I my channel kind of blew up because of my hair. Yeah, my, and which you which don't is, have anymore. I don't, you cut yeah. it off. I cut it off, but still now it's like, <laughs> yeah. still an issue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so what, uh, yeah, I mean, the whole hair journey process, and you know, the, I don't know, from just being around black women mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. in the in in this day and age it's natural hair is such a big so phenomenon in. and yeah it's just such a big thing yeah. like the the natural hair youtube channels the natural hair websites the natural hair products yeah. the natural, it's just so much it's a lot so you know people started following, following i didn't know there was a huge movement of, about that yeah, either i yeah. didn't know cuz i've always had my hair curly mm -hmm. i never I mean, like, you know, once in a blue, my mom would straighten it. But m my mom is Filipino, and I didn't grow up with the mentality that my hair is, you know, unruly and needs to be tamed and sh you need to slap a relaxer in it. If anything, my mom had a hard time mm. with the texture, but she was just like, okay, I have to learn how to braid my daughter's hair. I have to learn how to... Like, so she accommodated my hair, but she didn't try to, like... So I don't have that mentality of relaxers and... Um, this whole straight hair beauty because mm -hmm. that's the that's the reason why there's a huge movement yeah. because women have that, been told that their hair isn't beautiful exactly because it wasn't straight because it's not straight mm -hmm. I, I didn't have that but there's still that um, underlying message through uh, media mm -hmm. so I've always had my hair curly mm -hmm. so when to go on YouTube to do a video that's totally has nothing to do with hair I'm talking about uh, a social media experiment and, and nobody not I shouldn't say nobody people were interested in that mm -hmm. but I found overwhelming comments in my YouTube videos about my hair mm -hmm. so I was like okay here so that so that led you to do more of sort of beauty style videos yeah I would say it was okay. never really uh that was for sure not part of the plan okay. it was I didn't really have a plan though <laughs> yeah <laughs> so that's why when it came about I was like sure like I'll do one video here you go, thinking that would end it, mm -hmm. but no, it's like, okay, you did that, can you do this? And I'm like, yeah. whoa! And so, and now, I mean, for those that don't know, this is like, you know, it starts, it's like thousands, and then it's like a couple thousands, and then it's like and hundreds that, of thousands of people hair. watching your videos, so... For my hair. For your hair, yeah, so, I mean, what made you then want to chop it all off? Oh, like, I knew right away after I put out the first curly hair video mm -hmm. because it did so well, and it shocked me because I was trying to put out more of a message of, like, shameless self-promotion and, like, interviewing artists and, like, really trying to get more into that world. Mm -hmm. 
But with YouTube, it's very like numbers driven. So to compare a video that I did like with an artist that did maybe like 3,000 views to a curly video that did 300,000 views, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, um, <laughs> which one am I going to do again? Mm -hmm. So, but when I put that video out and it did so well, I, I was shocked and overwhelmed by all the comments. And I said right away on the first curly video that I'm shaving my hair off on my one year anniversary. So I had already decided it in the okay, beginning. Okay. I didn't decide halfway through or anything like that. I knew from the beginning. Now, did, I guess what happened then is that like, did some of the girls that were following you because of your hair, did they stop? Yeah, they did, yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> About 5,000 people unsubscribed. What? Just but because? But then 300,000, or I shouldn't say that, 30,000 or between 30 and 50,000. Did? Other girls. Okay. And guys, subscribe. Wow. I mean, why? What? A lot of people, and it was a religious thing too. A lot what of. What I mean? I, um, my one video announcing my head shaving. Mm -hmm. Um, was a very religious debate in the comment section. Why? How is that a religious debate? What does that have to do with religion? Because I have like an inspirational message. Mm -hmm. A lot of um, people, a lot of Christians or Catholics or of that denomination are subscribed to me. Oh, okay. So they were, well, I shouldn't say they, but a few people from that that are really like, you know, I want to call them Bible thumpers because they use the Bible as a weapon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they were quoting from the Bible, like in Corinthians, like, a woman's hair is her crown and glory. And a lot of like... What? Yes. Oh my goodness. And, I, and I've read the Bible from cover to cover. And I, yes, I know it's there. But like at the same time, this has nothing to do with that. If like anything. Yeah. Right. This is just a personal journey that yeah, I'm yeah. going on. And a lot of people were angered by that. Oh my goodness. But a lot of people were also supportive. Mm -hmm. And then I had a lot of um, Muslim viewers also comment in the section they were really they were really nice and positive and they're mm -hmm. like oh you know this is why we as muslim women cover our hair because i went on to say that you know beauty is more than just your hair or yeah. it's more than makeup it's like what's inside and a lot of young women are just caught up with my, ha my hair yeah not yeah. your hair my yeah. hair <laughs> it's <laughs> <Yeah>. my hair <laughs> yeah exactly do you find that you know putting yourself out there just can become too much is there do you have a a barrier or or a uh do you have like a level of things that you just won't say like what like what do you keep private because so much I kept of yourself my um my my marriage divorce private okay yeah. that stuff um any person any family kind of problems or any of that in that, in that nature i mm -hmm. keep private i keep um like the the little kids in my family and the older besides my mom i mean I, she kind of likes, I don't want to keep my mom a secret, uh -huh. but like anyone else who I feel um, is vulnerable, mm -hmm. I won't put them yeah, just on my there. channel or yeah. out there. So they don't even know like how many little kids are in my family or any of that. Yeah. I think, yeah, there's, I've always, I always have like strict rules with certain things. I'm learning as I get older to not necessarily have, like, I used to have rules of right. my, like, these are, this is who I work with. Right. This is who I'm friends with. Right. This is who, and like that, it's just, that has all kind of crumbled down. Oh, right. <laughs> you can't, it's just so hard to, to put those walls up. But, but for me in my personal life, I have, I don't really share anything about my right. personal life on social media, on the internet, all that. That has a lot more to do though with me from like, like having theories about the government and like oh, yeah. you know stuff I like mean, and just people just I don't I don't want to ever say something because I have a public voice I don't want to ever get in any type of trouble and have like people that I love and that are close to me affected by it so I, that, I try to keep that stuff very separate not even to say I'm doing anything wrong or I'm not I'm not doing anything I got everything that I'm doing is kosher I'm not doing anything right. illegal but just I'm just like preparing for the day that oh. something crazy happens and somebody's trying I, to get somebody close to me. I don't right. want that to happen. I, I try to restrict, like, travel information. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah, you gotta I, watch You that. don't need to know where my flight is. Yeah, yeah, You don't yeah. need to know what day I'm leaving. Yeah, some people post, like, you know, their pictures right. of their boarding pass right. and stuff. And it's like, whoa. I just sneeze. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> Thanks. So stuff like that I try to keep private or I'll uh, post later mm -hmm. <laughs> once I've left the airport. Um, but... The one thing I have learned, especially with um, Instagram, keep your 
well, for me, I keep my dating, my personal like relationships mm-hmm. that are are intimate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Off, off of Instagram. line. You, you can stay offline. Like a lot of people are posting like these couple things, and it's like, oh, I love my man. So, I mean, yeah. that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but then, like, you know, down the road, it's like, oh, they're no longer together, and then no, everything's whatever. deleted, and then someone unfollowed someone, and then it's like, I feel like. It's natural, but we naturally post all the happy moments. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we, why would anyone want to post a negative moment? So. Well, a lot of people do. They do. Yeah, on well, I mean, well, I think social media it should be yeah. Positive. It's half truths. Yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely it's not story. what's all going on in your life. Right. Do you? For me, when people, I again, as I mature, I'm starting to get over this. But when people like would come up to me and be like, you know, man. You're like, you're doing it up, man. Mm-hmm. Like, you're just right, living right, life. Right. I get you that know too. what I mean? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> and it's like, sure, because I post right. all that stuff on, I mean, I post the, the, the highlights of my life right, on social media. It's I, fun. Yeah, you know what I mean? And you I have a very. Celebrate those moments. Yeah, I have a very fun life. I do fun things, and my career is very social and fun, and I'm always having a good time. But at the same time, I do go through a lot of problems in my life, and I, there's a lot of stuff in my life that the public doesn't know. Right. But the close friends and family that right. I have know about, but. I'm not going to post that on Social Instagram. Media. I'm yeah, not going to be like, oh my God, I just got in the biggest <laughs> argument. And like, this is my sad face. You know what I mean? And I'm feeling like heartbroken right now. I'm not going to post that on Instagram. But I mean, that's so... <laughs> Can I help? Yeah, it's, yeah it's, not, it's, not, it's not meant for that for me. Right. But so, I don't, I don't know. know. Who, what do you... Who does that? I don't know anyone that does that. You don't know? Maybe what? Yeah, I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I, okay, I see anyways. people doing that a lot. I don't really like... Yeah. Yeah, I see that. I don't follow that. <laughs> I, well, see, well, my my issue is I follow like my friends and people oh, that right. I just like that I know. Mm-hmm. I don't keep it like I I, I try to keep it like business mm-hmm. sort of, or like people that I am getting some type of inspiration from. Right. Or I like what they're posting and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But then sometimes I'm following people who are just posting garbage, and I'm like, uh, right, right. I don't like to unfollow them. Right. I feel like that's I don't know. Slap in the face right. if they see me or <laughs> something in the uh, street. But well, I don't know. Whatever, what what, yeah. what is what is social media etiquette? Is is there any now? I mean, I think it's case to case and whatever that individual is comfortable with. And people will learn. The yeah, hard yeah, way. yeah, yeah. The hard people way need sure. to learn. They need to fall. They need to do all that. Like, because you can't just tell them what to do. That doesn't work. So mm-hmm. I feel like etiquette will be learned. So people will learn, like, after they finish posting, like, you know, seven weeks of photos with their new guy that they're dating. And then, then, then whatever happens blows up and then it's like, right, let me, yeah. but some people don't. And then they, <laughs> <laughs> they, then they post their up. new man. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, I don't need to know who you, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I mean, it's case to case. I definitely didn't po- post that much of my, um, my marriage when I was married. It was very like limited so it wasn't that much of an issue when that didn't work out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How how was that? I mean, going through something like that while you're Promoting. yeah while while you're I guess starting this new journey and this new career that you right. have, but you're also going through a divorce. How did you balance life and work? Um, it was really like I. I I don't want to sound like a hippie, but weirdly divine, like, mm. because the ch- my my challenge started out of frustration with my life, and it also had to do with my marriage. Like, I wasn't I wasn't happy. Like, we weren't happy in a mar- in our marriage. Mm-hmm. I can't complain. I can't ask my husband at the time to change or anything. The only one I can change in this relationship is myself. Mm-hmm. So instead of getting frustrated and mad with him, um. I decided to like use that energy and just work on myself in doing so it caused like a further rift, Mm. but I feel like that was just part of it. Cause I can't change you. I I can't make you want to be married. I can't make you want to stay with me so I can just work on myself and hopefully that will make our relationship better, but it never did. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's difficult. Um, when, when two people are just not seeing eye to eye, that's always an, an issue. So I just threw myself into my work. I just became a workaholic. Yeah. Yeah. And so I guess now, now that you're just working constantly, how do you then balance dating? I and, don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
<laughs> no, man. I mean, like, I'm in a different place in my life. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like maybe, I don't know, maybe when you're in your 20s. Mm-hmm. Not maybe. When you're in your 20s, date. <laughs> date, date, date. Like, because you don't realize, like, I mean, dating or even like a marriage or a relationship helps you discover who you are. Like, yeah, you, for sure, you won't for sure. realize all your, like, flaws or all the things that you need to work on unless you're in those intimate relationships where they come to surface yeah so i think that's important Mm -hmm. if you kind of avoid that until you're what like i don't know 30 40 you're gonna have a harder time adjusting so i think yes date in your 20s kind of limit that off social media like keep it to yourself you don't need to be boastful or any of that but um (sighs) Yeah, I think. What was the question? Where am I going? <laughs> well, I was. I was just asking. How are you balancing? Oh, I don't. So yet, I don't so. date. Like I. Maybe I do. I go on like dinners and stuff, but yeah, nothing. But... Nothing that makes me want to stop working. So mm-hmm. I realize I'm like there are. I'm meeting interesting people, but because I am still a work in progress and I'm kind of growing at this rapid rate, I don't want to get in a relationship because. It's just, it's just gonna like relationships require work. Yeah. It requires a, like relationship is a priority, and where I'm at right now, that is not a priority. So. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I, I guess... would like to meet someone. I would like to meet someone that could potentially lead to something else down the line. Mm-hmm. But I don't want to be in a serious relationship right now. But I would like to meet whoever that is in a kind of like a working environment. So it's like work oriented that doesn't doesn't make any sense so you, so you want to meet focus so you want to meet somebody while you're working and then have that work relationship turn into a romantic relationship i mean that's one idea <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's one thing that, that i don't just, i see when girls when that's that's so funny that you like that's that's what you're sort of envisioning because <laughs> when girls when that actually happens like right. when you're working with somebody and like a guy tries to holler at you mm-hmm. and you're working with them girls are most likely all the time like Ugh, i can't believe he just tried to talk to me and i'm working with I, I, that that i don't want okay so it's just like work like we're just working Oh, like that guy is also at the same place in his life. He's working. Right. Oh, so I yeah. get what you're saying. Okay, okay, okay. Like, Got you. Or just say, I mean, I've never dated anyone that was in my circle of working people. Yeah. But even that, like, if we're working and creating something together, then that's cool. Mm-hmm. But I don't want it to get intimate. Yeah, okay. Because okay. when the sense that starts, then it's all like, yeah, it's messy. Long show. Yeah, it's very, <laughs> very messy. Um,. So then what is the priority right now? Work. I guess no but World yeah, domination. But, <laughs> so okay, so Maya is plotting to uh <laughs> to go the world. Yeah, exactly. So what what is what is the uh sort of goals that you have right now? Um, okay, right now I'm working on the web series. I'm working on this web series with Andrea Lewis. Yeah. That's one thing I'm really excited about. I haven't really got a chance to like focus on that, so I will once I get to New York. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's one project I'm excited about. Um I don't even know how much I can divulge to this <laughs> viewers, but I am working as um, uh, a producer, so I have representation now mm-hmm. um, by an agency. So I will be pitching shows to networks. That's good. Which I'm excited about because I think there's like, I don't know, there's like a there's a hole on television. There's like there's the TV land, and then there's internet, but there's mm-hmm. a lot of cool content online that doesn't make it to television. I don't know yeah, if it's because yeah, yeah. of ratings or what. I'm not exa- entirely sure. But I would like to yeah. figure out a way to have um, entertaining, educational, inspirational programming for television. Because television, at the end of the day, does make its way into a lot of homes. Mm-hmm. And I, I am doing that online. I want to continue growing and building that. But I also want to start new ventures and... That's one of them. You know, you said so. You said uh, why doesn't a lot of stuff you want? You said you wanted to make something that's entertaining, entertaining educating, inspirational. inspirational. Now, the reason why that stuff is not on TV a lot right now, and it is on the internet, right. is because television doesn't think in those capacities. It needs to be one thing right. instead of multiple things and multi-dimensional. Right. Traditionally, television right. is, hey, we are trying to reach moms that are thirty to forty-five. They make this type of money. They have this type of time to watch this right. cooking show. And this is what... It, so it's very one-dimensional. Right. As more people spend time on the web and the audience grows yeah. on the web. And right. basically, yeah, the time spent watching video on your computer mm-hmm. increases. 
the more people, the more we're seeing, even now we're seeing like people sort of transitioning and people making content that is on the web, that is also on TV Mm -hmm. and people coming from the web to TV. But it just all has to start becoming like one, like one screen. And then once that happens, you'll start to see a mix of the type of content and like diversifying. I think it's starting. Yeah, I mean, it's I don't have starting. cable, so <laughs> who am I to? Yeah. But you know that network pivot. Yeah. Uh-huh. That yeah. I mean, that whole network is, I feel like, built on those principles. And with yeah. um, uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt's show Hit Record, yep. it's like a perfect example of all of those elements Stuff from online, online yeah. brought on television. Yeah. I don't know what the ratings are or any of that. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, Pivot, I mean, if you, I mean, it's brand new, right? It's brand so new. Same I imagine is, it's a small... Yeah, it's a very small... Like, when you talk about <laughs> Pivot, yeah, in comparison to, like you ABC know, ABC, or, NBC. Yeah. yeah, it's a little different. But I think that's the sort of name of the game right now is creating stuff that is niche. Right. And, you know, because... There's always going to be these big powerhouses and, like, huge companies. But niche markets are what are going to win. It's like, I'm, you know, you're you're, you're not going to beat Nike at this point if you're trying to make sneakers. You know what I mean? Nike is Nike. Mm -hmm. But there's still a bunch of room for different little independent brands to be creative and do dope stuff. But, you know, and and have a a pocket of success in in their own realm and, and and when i say that it's like i mean you can still make a lot of money and you can still reach a lot of people but mm-hmm. it's just like it's just the niche is to me is like the future of right. art business everything yeah and that's kind of that's what i want to focus on and that's what i've i'm trying to re- redirect my attention with on my channel as well mm-hmm. because when you're like talking when you're dealing with youtube there's like gamers Oh, yeah, YouTube is definitely... And then, like, you know, like, uh, there's the comedy. Fragmented. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, in terms of numbers, those those worlds do really well. And I got into the beauty world, Mm -hmm. which I think is part of... um, Part of... That's... I don't know how to describe it. It's important. It's part of the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. But uh, I feel like a lot of young girls, like, focus too much on that. Yeah. And they neglect the other parts of... The whole, which is like being like healthy, being like in tune with who you are and discovering that. And that doesn't necessarily come in the form of lipstick or natural hair care product. (laughs) I don't, you know, I mean, what do you, what do you see as the, I guess, because, you know, you reach so many young girls. What, Mm -hmm. what, what is the, how do you get girls to understand when, I mean, the country yeah, our society is so focused on women's beauty and women looking a certain way mm-hmm. and women being, you know, like just ho- holding this standard of beauty up so high. And like, how how, did, how does that shift and how do you begin to get women to think that, hey, I'm, you know, beautiful within my own self? I, I think the, for me to do, like... Well... I mean, is that even one of your goals? Too? Yes. Like, yeah. now I'm just, like, the the whole beauty and fashion thing, I don't want to say it can only get you so far, because it can get you far. Mm-hmm. But in terms of, like, um, in terms of how happy I am with myself, mm-hmm. I that doesn't make me happy. And I think a lot of girls realize, like, you can buy all these things, you can wear all these clothes and do all these things to your face, but at the end of the day, that's not going to solve the problem. Mm-hmm. So I think they're already aware of that. And... I think it's just a matter of accessibility because a lot of people are looking for inspiration. So they're looking, they, they might, I don't want to say looking in the wrong places, but where do you find that information? You know what I mean? It's not, it's not part of pop culture to like find inspiring stories or being educated. So I think the more um, people such as myself or other platforms that can use their their uh like their, their reach and their influence, reach yeah. to like talk more about other things besides um beauty and fashion and all of that stuff but you know to each their own uh nobody necessarily has to do that but for me i want to delve more into that world which mm-hmm. is why i'm doing more vlogs i feel like just living that life and just sharing my life with someone um as opposed to telling them how to live it mm-hmm. is more inspiring than you know pick up a book like, yeah I yeah don't know. what so i mean what what ways do you 
I guess, make sure that you're mentally healthy. I have to like, it's so weird because on YouTube, because I am part of a community, mm -hmm. I, it's hard because like, like you said, I, I don't want to unfollow people because they're going to get like offended, but yeah. it's like, it has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with me. And it's so important what you expose your eyes to and who you hang around with. Yeah, for sure. Like, so if, if you are constantly watching, um, you know, beauty tutorials all day, every day, like, I don't know how much inspiration you're going to find, but like, for me, it's, it's so important to like find channels or, uh, websites or magazines that have to do with things that are important. So like uh, my subscription to fortune magazine or, uh, subscribing to channels like, uh, soul pancake mm -hmm. or YouTube nation, or there's, there's a lot of platforms out there, but it's finding them. Okay. Um, but <laughs> yeah, I, I am just trying to share what I, what I discover with other people and hopefully that what about in like though in, in an off YouTube way or in an off like media consumption way what what type of things do you do to just yeah stay like you know a good person well because you have to be conscious of you have to be super self conscious all of this stuff yeah and super self aware and, and aware to the sense that like you could do better yeah absolutely a lot of people think like this is it. Like, it's not my fault. It's everyone else's fault. Like, yeah. get over yourself. It's your fault. <laughs> You're partly to blame. So for me, it's all about, um, I'm very, you know this, I'm very spiritual. Mm -hmm. I pray a lot. Um, I do go to service when I can. Um, I'm not, like, the thing with me is I'm not, like, I don't like labels. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not Christian. I'm not, you know, uh, atheist. I'm not, not any of these things, but I have a strong belief in a higher power that's super important to me um what else just being out with friends and family i'm very adventurous like i will go hiking and go on like surfing or snowboarding or all of these activities because it just it just makes your life more whole and the more you can experience the more you will have to bring if you literally just do the same thing Day in and day out. And I'm not talking about your job. I'm talking about what you expose your eyeballs yeah. to when you're not working. Yeah. Then you're limiting yourself and your, your own potential. So yeah. It's so important just to make a point, like, to educate yourself. Yeah, yeah. It's like, um, I think from a health perspective, it's like when you are, when you are uh, running or mm -hmm. when you're doing something, you're lifting weights or when you're at the gym or whatever it is, you're doing something that is like, you're feeling resistance and right. your body needs to feel resistance mm -hmm. to better itself. You know what I mean? Right. If you're just doing something like, and so if, if you think about that from a health perspective right. and like from a physical perspective, it's the same thing from a mental perspective right. when you're like, if you're just doing the same thing over and over again, you're getting up, you're sitting on your computer, you're doing work and you're going to your job and you're, and you're not doing anything that's like difficult or challenging yourself. Mm -hmm you are literally going to become stagnant in right. your life, you stagnant in your yourself. thoughts, stagnant in everything. And it's like, that's what happens when, you know, like when, when you're stagnant, that's like the equivalent of like a slow death. You know yeah. what I mean? You're basically just dying. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm trying to constantly do things that are, you know, that I am not good at or right. and I need to learn how to get better at this stuff mm -hmm. while sharpening my strengths, but like learning right. new things at right. the same time. But I, I still have a long way to go. I'm yeah, definitely no. not perfect well, by any means. Me too. But I mean, I think that's what the, like, you, you know, life is all about. It's like mm. constantly pushing yourself. I, I don't know how some people just start comfortable. Com comfort is a scary place yeah i mean comfortability it is, works for some people like some people yeah, want that it's it's com comfortability is it like breeds laziness it does you know what i mean when you that's are why just... i stay away from those relationships man like <laughs> yeah. honestly because it you know what there there are goods and like bads with it mm -hmm. there's goods and bads positives and negatives but like when you're like in a relationship and you're like two people are in love and it's just like, you know, you just, all you want to do is just like chill in bed all day. And yeah. I mean, that's cool. That's the trade off, but I can do that later on in life. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like a lot of, um, uh, successful people. And I mean, people that aren't just popular, but that have, that are driven and have, um, you know, they had goals and they reached their goals and they're constantly pushing themselves. The one common denominator, ugh, 
common denominator is the work ethic. Like everyone oh, yeah, is like a workaholic. Like mm. the work is not fun. It's fun and to a certain extent. Like I would rather work doing this than, you know, maybe, I don't know. Bartending. What people do. What you no, used no, to no. be done. No, not that. Um, oh. What do people do on their days off? Like. Oh, then just like, yeah, like. Chill, chill. Or yeah, watch movies and I don't know. Watch I mean, movies. <laughs> movies are cool. I make movies. They but. are too. They um, are though. I don't know what <laughs> you know what I mean. I know what you mean. You'd rather just. I would rather work. Yeah. Than... Then, but you also need time for yourself, and you need yeah, time to true. relax, and you yeah. need time to wind down, and and sort of like, you know, it's the same thing. It's like if you're just constantly working, 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 working. Yeah, you'll burn you don't out. you'll burn out, and you don't have <laughs> you don't have time to like recharge and right. think about okay, well, because. I, what I found for me with creative stuff and ideas, it comes to me a lot of times when my mind is zoned out completely and I'm relaxing. Whether if I'm meditating, it's like sometimes I'll just get an idea. Or if I just wake up from a really good sleep, mm -hmm. I'll just get an idea. Like, that's how I got an idea about this new merch thing that I'm about oh, to do. Okay. Like, I was literally knocked out. for, And I was like, I was in the middle of work mm -hmm. and I was just like working at the crib all day. And I was like, I gotta take a nap. I have Jabari to. has new merch coming out, FYI. Yeah, new merch, people. <laughs> oh, man. If y'all thought the mobbing hats were crazy. <laughs> Woo. Um, but yeah, so it was like, I went to sleep and I just took a break from everything. And mm -hmm. I woke up and I was like, oh, here's what I did. It's true. Yeah, it, you know what it is? I think it is a balance. Like, mm -hmm. um, people who have a hard work ethic, then they relax and then they go back to work, like, re energize. But then there are, I guess, the other groups of people that are like, I don't know. They're not completely relaxed, but they're not applying themselves. Yeah. So yeah. when they do, it's kind of a challenge, and then they take a step back. I think it's just important to move. Yeah, yeah Move yeah. as much as you can, but then, yes, relax. It is That is true. Because I spent this month here in L.A. Not relaxing, but, yeah, like, but taking a step back from what I was doing and redirecting it in a, a different way. Yeah, you're challenging yourself. That's, that's what you need to do. Um, what is... What when is success to you? I have I have different sort of barometers of what success means to me, and they always change. Um, but I think essentially it's like being able to be free mm -hmm. and do whatever it is that you want to do creatively, and and essentially make a living off of the 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 things that you want to spend your time doing, right. not things that you. Uh, have to spend your time doing or right. are like responsible for or all these things so what is what is success to you i it's in the, the similar vein as that i think it's for me it's doing what i enjoy doing while helping others mm -hmm. and i guess doing that on a level where you can like relax and not worry about you know bills and rent and all that stuff mm -hmm. like you want to be in a in a financially sound place which can allow you to be free. So, yeah. I th but that's part of it for me, as well as just being happy, which yeah. is, I guess, being free. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, being happy, definitely. That uh, What I forgot to say was being happy, essentially, for me. That is... that is, Freedom, yeah. Yeah, yeah, freedom. Um, I mean, I think people don't understand, though, that we, we live in a time with the internet mm -hmm. right now that is so incredible that... Literally, like no other time before, even 10 years ago, mm -hmm. I mean, you can do whatever it is that you enjoy <laughs> doing. You can make a career off of that. And you oh, can right. get people to purchase things and you can create a business from whatever it is you like to do. Because like we were saying, it's all about the niche right now. You know right. what I mean? If you really like handcrafting some right, type yeah. of little, you know, I don't, I don't know. Like if you if you're just making something with your hands and you are making a few of them, but they're really detailed and they're really, you know, let's, let's say it's some type of pottery mm -hmm. and, and it's incredible. And you just get a friend that knows how to take really good photos of it. Right. You can build a store, you can get like five people to buy it and then post it. And then it just goes and goes and goes. And it's just like, you just have to find what the hell are you good at? Right. And good share and that passionate. with them and passionate about right. it. Yeah. And share that with the world because any anything that is going to anything that is passionate any any time that you can see that somebody took time and energy and like really crafted something whether that's you know music art film 
fashion, whatever it is, you, you we see it in all these things. That, right. But there's what I want to sort of get people to start thinking about is it's not just those things. You can do it in a bunch of other different ways, but it's just what is good to you. Right. You know what I mean? And there's so much. Now, well, now's the time. Now's the time, yeah. Yeah. And I think with social media, it's more evident to more people. Yeah. I think a lot of people are realizing, because I realized it, you know, uh, almost two years ago that, wait a minute, people are putting themselves out there and sharing it online and, you know, they're growing and they're becoming successful and they're, they're able to like live these lives that I am envious of. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think social media in that respect definitely will help facilitate that. And also just putting yourself out there is inspiring to other people. Yeah. As long as it's true to you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 It's definitely inspiring. Um, what what are you i guess what is the next sort of few months look like for you what's going to be happening i know you're you're going to still continue doing stuff on youtube mm -hmm. um but what other goals and things are you trying to do i'm trying to do it all man just like you like i i'm trying to do like merch um i really do feel passionate about like storytelling so whether that's in an actual book mm -hmm. um I have two ideas for a book. It's just like right now I'm focused on the web series. Yeah. The web series and pitching these shows, whether they pan out or not, is out of my hands. But we're developing on shows and concepts that are open to as many people as I can hit. That's that's always kind of been my goal. Like, how can I influence a large group of people? Because inspiration for me comes from others mm -hmm. as well as like my like kind of my thing that I like my tagline like just for life is to inspire while being inspired so uh -huh. I feel like the the more people you can reach the more inspiration you can draw but for me what I when I think in terms of like what is my next move I try to like include things that can reach like a broad demographic not just like you know curly girls or just you know, black girls or Asian girls or mixed people. I want, like, I feel like stories that are universal should, you know, strike a chord with everyone. Yeah. yeah. So I'm trying to work on projects that, um, that kind of encompass that. Okay. There's a lot happening, but yeah. <laughs> I literally, I have, I have As goals. A, I mean, anybody that's doing something, you ask anybody that's, that's, that's successful on a road to success and that's creative typically it's a bunch of stuff going on at one time right that's just that's what i found from right. like my friends and stuff like that is everybody has a bunch of stuff going on yeah it's a good thing there's a lot but focus is also good focus is good <laughs> but you can focus on many things at once i mean look at like i mean look at look at so I'm many people still doing it yeah there's amazing people out here doing a bunch of different things and mm -hmm. like it all comes they, we all have the same amount of hours in the day. Right, yeah. So, so yeah, it's exciting. Um, where can people find your stuff? Let these folks know. Uh, YouTube.com slash Shameless Maya. I try to at least upload one video a week. It's, it's usually between two and three. But you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, my, my tag... Or my username is Maya's World. Her username is that? Username. What do you people say? <laughs> I mean, I guess, yeah, my, I don't know. Maybe. My what? It just sounds so old. It sounds so 90s, right? What is right? the thing that then? <laughs> user's na username. My. Yeah, that's what it's called. Tag? Yeah, it's called. Yeah, tag at, I don't know. At me. <laughs> at me. <laughs> at me. Yeah. Maya's World. M-A-Y-A. -A. Uh, Facebook, Shameless Maya. What else? I'm now I have to do this whole Google Plus thing. Yeah, yeah, you gotta I'm get on Google Plus. Google Plus is real, man. I know, I know. Yeah, it's real. It's, it's... No, but I have the the <laughs> the personal page. Yeah. But I gotta get the profile. Yeah, yeah. You don't have that. I just did it today. Oh man. No, it's annoying. You are late on that. <laughs> I oh know. my goodness. Wow. Anyways, wow. you can find me okay. on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, guys. Um, definitely check out all of my stuff. Uh, really inspiring content. Um, and there's gonna be much more to come. Um, for all of you guys that want to rage with us man colors colors is here that's the new party um wow la was crazy uh and we're getting ready to hit new york so we'll be in new york on march 28th all right mycolorsparty.com nyc.mycolorsparty.com that's for new york so march 28th come out have a drink with me and uh let's party and what else do I have going on? Um, 
Follow me? Follow me is pretty much done. Oh, is it done? That's yeah, five? Yeah. Nah, three. Three. I, I thought only it was one three. of five. It was one of five. And you then I changed it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, because the other people that I were going to shoot, they're just acting brand new. Not brand new, but Actors. too busy. Oh, too no, busy. No, no. They were, oh, they're yeah. acting brand new. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, no, nah, but, uh, but yeah, more, more content is coming soon. Um, but I will let you guys know very, very soon in the future. I, I can't wait till I'm able to talk about my film, man. Good Which God. I, you know, the film. I can't no. talk about it right oh, okay. now. But okay. I'll tell you guys soon. Sorry. All right. <laughs> well, like I said, if you guys want to support this podcast with the tip, go to patreon.com slash Jabari. Tip your um, servers. <laughs> yeah. Um, support it, guys, so we can continue the podcast. We can keep it growing. Uh, if you want to just give $1 per podcast, I would love you forever. Um, all right, guys, take it easy, and Peace. you already know, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. That's something I truly live by and believe, and uh, I think you guys should, too. All right?